Hey guys, hey guys, come on in, come on in. Welcome, welcome. Today is going to be a very, very fun day because we're first going to talk about a huge problem that a lot of 3D game developers are having and are going to have when they're making their 3D game, especially big interior levels. We're going to talk about optimizing that and hopefully get some advice from you guys about what I can do inside of Unity. Then we're going to just go in and start set dressing. I'm going to show you some really cool tricks to make a simple blocked out level look gorgeous. I did want to let you know really quick that for today and maybe one more day after this, we have a, well, big sale event going on for live streams only. In the link in the description and also in the chat box, the pinned chat, there is a 50% off coupon for just five of you. Those five of you are going to get shouted out in tomorrow's live stream um, and you're going to get 50% off full-time game dev. Um, I have a 3,000 students worldwide in this program. And this program not only is a huge investment for you guys because it's 30 plus hours of content about how to make six figures with just a demo, how to secure funding from publishers, how to reach out to the press, how to get YouTubers to play your game, how to get six figures on Kickstarter, how to learn C Sharp and Unity, make 2D and 3D games. It is a massive program. One of my students said it's the best program in game development that he's ever um, gone through. By the way, if you're a student, feel free to say hello in the chat. I'll try and say hello to you as well. And I just want to say a huge congratulations to new students that supported this channel. They're supporting the development of Father, but more importantly, they're supporting their future. Um, Jaden, Matthew, I think it's Nguyen, Gwyn, David, Diego, Peter, Jeremy, Scott. You guys um, joined Full Time Game Dev last week during these live streams using these exclusive coupon code. So I just wanted to say a huge thank you to you guys. It really means a lot. So if you guys are interested, click the link in the description, support father's development, but more importantly, support your future. All right, let's go ahead and jump inside of Unity and get started. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys. So let's jump inside of Unity. We've got our game Father that we're working on. We have a big problem. The problem is optimization, okay? And I did want to say hello to students in the chat. Who's the student? Uh, Jeremy, new student, great, good to see you. Nick, Bell, uh, you say it's a fantastic course. That's awesome, hello, Nick. All right, let's say hello to some people who aren't students. Um, Game Dev Guy, welcome, welcome. Joseph, welcome, welcome. Rare Bird Games, welcome, welcome. So we have a major problem, and that is optimization, okay? And that's because we've got a ton of game objects in our scene. I'm gonna turn off the lighting here and just show you guys. This room is just a very simple, flat room, right? But it's made up of tiny little building blocks, right? We did this so that we could create a ton of different levels really, really fast. The goal is to be able to throw together a level in a day, uh, dress it up, and we'll do some set dressing in just a second and just get it done quickly and make changes. So for example, if, if this platform here wasn't really fun, if we didn't really like it, I could say, well, you know, let's delete that one and let's uh, delete that one, right? That's the goal. But the problem is optimization. So what exactly do you do about it? Well, I found this asset called Mesh Baker. So I'm gonna show you how it works really quick and then hopefully get your advice about how to make it even better, okay? So without getting into the nitty gritty of Mesh Baker, all it really does is it takes all these meshes and combines them into a single mesh and more importantly takes all of the materials we've got like 30 different materials within the context of this scene and it takes it and it puts it into one material now the problem is it gets screwed up okay so that's <laughs> something that i'm working on right now that's kind of the benefit to you guys of me doing live streams um basically you get to see me making mistakes and learning at real time, okay? So I'm gonna hit play really quick and just show you what we've got. Um, this is a really great scene 
um, that Felipe threw together. Felipe is my 3D modeler. I said, Felipe, can you just throw together a level design really quickly? So he did this in about a day, just showcasing all of our elements we have and the gameplay that we have, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and play Maximize. I'm gonna re remove the stats and just show you guys what we've got currently, okay? So this is our transitional element. This is a element that we're gonna use over and over in the game. When you get to a new level and it loads in, there's just this that takes you to the, the old level, right? So you can go backtrack, or it takes you to the new level, okay? So this is what we've got here. Again, tons of pieces, thousands of little pieces throughout our scene, okay? Let me just show you what we've got. Beautiful little foyer area here. There's no set dressing, so there's no carpet, there's no rugs, there's no tables, there's nothing like that. We're gonna do that in just a second. There's some enemies to kill. Kill these little guys here. One sec, get out of here. All right, and we've got some locked doors over here that you have to go find keys to. We've got some minor set dressing that we've placed in here, but that's about it. Big, massive scene here that we can explore. We've got some platforming. We've got some key collection. I can show you that. Broken bridges that showcase the dash ability, right? We've got some platforming that requires you to do double jumping. Some levels we even have, um, some levels we even have LOD. That might be a good option, actually. Sort of LODing out things. That's a great idea. I wonder if we should do that. So, uh, we've already got it. We've already utilized occlusion culling. So for those of you who don't know, occlusion culling basically removes anything behind the camera viewport. Okay. So if I turn this way, everything behind me is not going to be rendered. So that's that's working. Okay. But we still have some performance issues. Okay. I got the red key. I can use that red key to go over here, all the way back up. Enter the red key area. Right. And so it just takes you to new areas. You find more keys, find more weapons, find more enemies. Um, that is the goal of this game. It's a very simplistic game in that regard. What really makes it special, and we've also got our wall running here to showcase that. Switches, right? So we're showcasing, this, this level is really just a showcase of all of the different mechanics we have. And this is for our purpose of really kind of getting an idea of what this game is but it's also for presenting to publishers or if we're working with a publisher, just saying, hey, here's all the mechanics, here's all the enemies we've got currently, okay? So let's talk about this whole mesh baking thing, okay? Mesh baker's a really sweet tool. I've already got it set up, um, but basically, I don't wanna go through the whole nitty gritty, but basically we're gonna combine all of these materials over here with these individual objects. And we're gonna combine all of this into one big mesh or at least quadrants of meshes, okay? So if I go ahead and click generate mesh bakers and then bake all child meshes, you can see we have a little bit of an issue here. I'm gonna disable the actual renders of the original. So now all we have here is a bunch of different meshes that got combined. Now it definitely screwed things up because I'm trying to still figure out why it's screwing things up. But overall, the, the point here is to figure out if this actually optimizes the game. Okay, so let me show you here. If I turn on my gizmos, you can see these massive squares, right? These are quadrants that are being filled in by new combined meshes. So for example, we now have a combined mesh here, which is this, okay? As opposed to individual four by four blocks, okay? Now how effective this is, I'm not right, uh, quite sure right now. And by the way, if you're just joining the chat, just remember you can support the game's development and also support your future, support yourself, invest in your future by joining full-time game dev. Great reviews. It looks like everybody in the chat who is a student loves the program. So if you're interested, check it out using the five coupon codes below. There are just five today. But I'm just curious if this is actually gonna solve any problems here. So if I hit, if I go to all of our different new combined meshes, this is a little bit complicated, but if I select all these new combined meshes, mark them as static, what that means is I can now do some occlusion culling, so I can bake the occlusion, okay? Now that baking has occurred, I can go ahead and hit play here and we can see it, what performance is, okay? If I go to stats here, we can see our stats at the top. 
looks like we have a max batch count at our probably worst case scenario, which is really looking down this channel because it's just rendering so much. It looks like our batches is 1,080, okay? It was originally around 2,500. So that's great news, right? We basically cut the batches in half. Now, I want to direct a question to you guys because I know there's probably half of you in there who are smarter than me, okay? The first question I've been wanting to ask, and I've been excited to do this live stream because I want to get your opinion. Is a thousand batches too many? Is that too many batches for sort of a classic boomer shooter style game? Let me know in the chat. I want to figure this out, okay? Let's just assume that all of these issues get resolved and I can figure out why they're screwed up. Um, let's assume that we fix those. Is that too many batches? Okay, we've got yeses in the chat. For mobile, yeah, well, this ain't gonna be a mobile game, but maybe it'll be Switch, right? If it's a Switch game, is that too many batches? If it's too many batches, what should be our aim? How many batches should we be going for? What's a good number we should go for? I did some Googling. It looks like 300 is probably what we should be going for. Spider says 1,000 is okay. Hey, where are you going? <laughs> 300 to 400, okay. <coughs> so I think the way that we're gonna resolve this, guys, the resolution for our batch count issue. What are you doing? The resolution, one of the resolutions I'm gonna come up with here on the spot, one of the res resolutions I'm thinking of to increase performance is we need to figure out a way, some tool, and this is the next question for you, some tool that goes in and deletes inside faces and also merges vertices, okay? Does anybody know a tool that can delete inside faces of our new mesh, okay? That's really, I think, what's going on because if you take a look at just this one here, this is a problem. Uh, basically, we've got a ton of inside faces that are ridiculous. It's completely unnecessary, right? It, we've got like a quadruple amount of faces when really we only need one, two, three, four, five, like six different faces. Mesh Combine Studio. Okay, let's go ahead and Google Mesh Combine Studio. This is a really, I've been wanting you guys to help me out with this. Mesh Combine Studio, let's take a look. Okay, it's got 120 reviews. Five star reviews, that's awesome. So it looks like this is probably a competitor to Mesh Baker, okay? Um, so this is great. I'm definitely gonna be considering this instead. If this can delete vertices, that's the most important thing. Um, 20 times better performance compared to Unity static batching. Good. You wonder why Unity doesn't have this built in already. Um, because I think creating, um, oh, I love this. Yeah, I'm going to definitely look at this. Have to rebake occlusion after Mesh Baker. We already did that. Um, great. So this is definitely something I'm gonna consider. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, leave a little heart. I'm gonna add it to my father list and we should be good to go. Okay, the next thing I wanted to cover guys, the next thing I wanted to cover now that we've done that is let's sort of go back in time here. The cool thing about Mesh Baker that I really like um, the cool thing that I really like about Mesh Baker is that we can sort of go backwards in time. We can say, ah, you know what, let's, en let's enable the old renderers again, and then let's delete all those child Mesh Bakers so that we can go back in time and things look good, right? So it's a non-destructive asset, which is great. That's really what I want. So everything looks good now, but you can see here, now our batches are back up to 3,000, right? So we're definitely gonna need to find a solution for that, and I'm gonna spend probably the rest of tonight after this live stream really looking into options available to us to get our batches down to something like 400. Now you'll see here, 
our badges are down to 133 because I'm looking at a wall, right? If you go into like hallways and stuff, it's gonna be 126. Sometimes it'll be like something like 300. But the moment you turn the camera and look over here, you're looking at 3,000 batches, which is definitely a problem, right? Um, so we definitely don't want that. Let's move on to set dressing. Now, this is why I want to make my game modular, why I care so much about the game being modular. Because I want to be able to basically create a tile-based game in 3D, right? There's different ways of doing this. Um, sometimes you just create the whole scene in Pro Builder, or you create the scene in Blender or something like that, and then you texture it there. For me, I would much rather be able to have the controls of doing it inside of Unity. So we're gonna start right here, and we're gonna start laying down carpet. Now remember guys, let's start with sort of a, a look here. We've got this look here. You'll see it's very flat, very boring. Let's turn off our gizmos. This is our before scene. Let's take a screenshot of this and put it in Photoshop just so we can remember what it looks like, okay? So I'm gonna open up my screenshot tool really quick. I'm gonna take a screenshot. I'm gonna bring this inside of Photoshop. I know you can't see Photoshop, one second. Let me load up Photoshop here. And we're gonna paste this inside of Photoshop and then we're gonna set dress it, this little hallway here. We're gonna make it look glorious, gorgeous. And hopefully you'll see the benefit of having modular assets that you can swap out textures with, okay? All right, let me read some comments here. Thomas, what about a multi-scene setup? That's, <coughs> that's definitely one of our so solutions we're considering, which is just having multiple smaller scenes. That, that might be a huge benefit. The problem is, honestly, I feel like we should be able to figure this out without that. Like, I feel like we should know what we're doing here. And right now, I just feel like we don't fully know exactly what we're gonna do here. So I wanna make sure that we're doing it right by default um, before we actually move in and start creating multiple scenes. Now, if you guys have any advice about this method that I'm doing, please let me know in the chat. For those of you who have done this and you've optimized for, say, Nintendo Switch or mobile, let me know in the chat. Thomas, you're doing this wrong. You should be doing it this way. Don't say Pro Builder, because <laughs> we don't want to use Pro Builder, but all other options are on the table, and I definitely want to hear your thoughts, okay? All right, that's our scene right now, right? Looks good, but it could look better, all right? We could add some intention to it. So let's go ahead and add some intention. The first thing I'm going to do is open up this banner, and I'm going to add some crosses, okay? Now, we could put all kinds of mes messaging here, um, but for me, I just want to put some simple crosses. So what I'm going to do is go find a cross banner that I've already done. There we go. And we're going to just scale this up so that we know the size of this cross. Okay. We want it to be the same sort of thickness. Okay. So we've got a banner that looks like that. We could probably just use this here, paste it in there. I think we can call it a day, right? Make sure they're nice and centered to the tip here. Bring those up, align them. And I'm gonna save this as a PSD. <coughs> that way we can re-import it as many times as we want. Okay, so let's go over to the flag here. And the cool thing is it's two-sided, right? So we can add messaging on the back if we want or the front. I'm gonna keep the original, or actually just, we'll delete that one. And then this one here is gonna be called um, crosses. Banner large with crosses, albedo. Not albedo, albedo, right? Let's go ahead and find the material. Make sure I'm getting the right one here. Let's fix that normal map. And we'll just drag in the with cross albedo. There it is. Okay, so right off the bat, we have some messaging now on our flags. Looks great. Now let's start adding some carpet, okay? So we already have a carpet material we've already made. So it's gonna be like Sims, okay? So we're gonna start with a three edge carpet. I think something like this and this, okay? Don't worry, we'll rotate those to make them work. I can show you really quick if you want. I'm gonna hold control and it's gonna snap, okay? 
So that looks cool, but maybe let's just do two edges on both sides, okay? Uh, maybe a corner piece. Outside corner here, outside corner here, and then we can rotate that one. Ah, now it's gonna look like a sort of a rug, like running down the, the edge here. So I'm gonna select all of these. Let me read the chat here. All righty. I'm gonna go ahead and pull really quick. It's gonna, um, let's see here. Give me just a sec here, guys. I gotta go to GitHub. Felipe's in the chat, guys. Say hello to Felipe. Felipe is the 3D modeler. Um, I'm gonna go to the chat, or the, the to GitHub here. I'm gonna discard any changes I made to the demo scene interior, okay? And what we're gonna do is, well, honestly, we can just discard all of our changes because we're not gonna really use those. I'm gonna discard those really quick. And then I'm gonna pull down the scene. felipe has been working on the scene as we talk right now. So I'm gonna pull that down. He's made some changes. What you wanna do when you're using GitHub and working when you're working with the team is you wanna make sure that when you're working with binary objects, AKA anything that's not a script, anything that <laughs> you save over that file and it, it doesn't really track changes, something like a scene or a prefab, you wanna make sure that your team members aren't working on it at the same time. So that's why I'm gonna pull it down. Felipe's gonna stop working on the scene right now and we're gonna reload the scene with Felipe's changes. That way when I start adding set dressing like this, um, it's going to basically allow us to start making changes, okay? To Felipe's changes, right? So we're gonna drag in that new albedo for the banner large. I'm gonna make sure we have our crosses there. There we go, looks like that didn't save, that's okay. Just save this as a PSD really quick again for you guys. And open this up inside of Unity. And we're gonna make this new albedo, <coughs> the PSD. Yep, just save that really quick. Go back to our banner here. There we go, drag in that PSD albedo. Whoops, where is it? Hmm, there it is, okay. All right, so we're back to where we were, so that's good, okay. Thank you, Felipe, for pushing the scene. So now what we're gonna do is go to our carpet, like we had, and remember, we wanted to have an outside corner. So we're just gonna drag the material, not the texture. So these materials can be used over and over and over again. Now this is one of those things where you gotta be thinking, are we gonna eventually bake the mesh and combine materials? Because that's gonna help with static batching, okay? Um, it really helps with static batching. If you have one material that's basically wrapping the whole scene, one or two materials, right? Right now, that's not the case because we haven't done any batching, okay? Now we can add an edge here, look. So basically we're slowly, almost like a tile-based game, creating a rug. So I'm gonna select all of these. This is sort of a fast way to paint our scene. I'm gonna select them all the way up to about there. And I'm just gonna drag in the carpet with one edge. There we go, okay. And now, when we select these here, go to rotate, pivot, we can rotate like this, maybe go all the way over to about there, there we go. I'm gonna hold control and just drag them back into place. So they're snapping nice and clean, right? And the same is gonna true, be true. Ooh, it looks like we didn't add the material to those. Just drag that in. No, we did. No, we didn't. Yeah, no, no, we're good, we're good. It's just underneath that ledge there. And that's something we learned from Doom. So we were studying Doom and we realized with Doom, they'll actually just elevate platforms just a little bit so I could take you know, this platform here, and I could just elevate it by one, and it creates just some variation in the floor. So sometimes it's good, even though it's not gonna change the gameplay much, sometimes it's good to just create some variation in your floor. Some visual fidelity, even though you're not really changing anything about the game, right? Okay, I can drag those in, and snap them into place, very good. And obviously this guy as well. I'm gonna just set it to center, <coughs> rotate it, there we go. All right, so let's hit play and sort of see how different things feel already. Okay, let me go ahead and bake the occlusion really quick. 
Just bake all that. All right. Ugh. So that should be good. All right, let's enter play mode. You wanna make sure you're out of the occlusion tab, otherwise it's gonna try and sort of showcase your occlusion at real time, which always slows things down, right? So let's open up that door, and take a look. All right, so as you can see, it's already making things look beautiful. Very good. We can use those same kind of a principle, <laughs> uh, principles. We can use those same kind of principles, guys, on the floors here, okay? So I can go to my stone edge material and I can add a corner here. I can add a corner here, right? Or you know what? I think I'm gonna do carpet. Let's do some more carpet, okay? If we go to our carpet here, we can actually have one with an A. Well, honestly, I think three edges would look really cool. So we'll do a three edge there, <coughs> a three edge there, a three edge here, and a three edge here and then a two edge here. It's funny, it doesn't look very good, does it? But all you gotta do is just rotate these. And now, it almost looks like a viewing area for these portraits. Really cool. Awesome, okay. Now, something we could maybe consider is you could take a platform and just duplicate it and put it on top of each other and create kind of a stared effect, right? Let's turn off the lighting so we can see better. We could do something like that if we wanted, right? But the problem is when you do this, you need to be sure that you're okay with it affecting your gameplay because now we can't actually step up. Let's hit play and I'll show you. Now we can't actually step up right here, right? So you'd have to add one there and there, which is just something you need to think about, right? I'm fine with just having it one elevation. So that can be deleted, and I think we're good to go. Now let's add some art to the portraits, right? So this is what we, we plan on doing for you know every level. You block it out, the gameplay's fun, the puzzles are fun, the enemy layouts are fun, and then you just start dressing the scene, okay? So we have a large, portrait here. It's a large rectangle, so I can drag in this one, which is our Holy Mother, Mother Eve. And I'm just going to put her in this one as well, just for now, because we only have one um, that we can use. So that looks good. Let's finish up this hallway here. What else can we do to the hall to make it look great? Well, we can actually add framing. One of the rules that Doom um, the Doom creators had when they were originally working on the original Doom was when you move from one texture to another, so for example, this corner here, you create some kind of frame, okay? So let's go ahead and create a frame. Well, we have these tile corners and edges that we can put, so we could do this. That's kind of cool, right? Or we could even do one with the wall. Right? So if we go to our brick wall, we can actually add a bottom edge to our wall. Well, that's actually more like what you might see in a traditional architecture, the framing at the bottom. So I think that's what we're gonna do, right? Let's just go ahead and add a bottom edge. Now we can do it really quickly here by just selecting them all, just like this. Let's add a little bit of room in our scene here. There we go and just start adding this framing. Now we're not gonna see it on that one, that's okay. But generally, this is what we wanna do. So one bottom edge gets in this slot here. Awesome. <coughs> so now you can see, we have a bottom edge on these. We don't have a bottom edge on these, okay? That's because they're flipped, all right? So these here, will be different. We'll add a bottom edge to these. Let's keep guessing and checking where it will go. Nope, almost. There we go. Okay, so now we have a bottom edge. Again, let's hit play and take a look. So just these subtle details, they're gonna make a big difference. Okay, 
to how our scene looks. Great. I like that. Now we could add some paneling to the walls, right? We could add some paneling maybe up here. So you have stone here and then paneling below, right? So let's try and see what happens when we add some paneling to these walls. So it's just very subtle changes to make the scene look just honestly 10 times better. So let's go to our wood paneling folder. There it is. Let's drag it in and see where we get it, what we get. Almost there. Maybe one more here. Okay, good. <coughs> Looks like we have a issue with the materials not remembering. So let's put a height map on there. There we go. Let's put our normal map on there as well. Where's the height map? There it is. Fix the normal map. Good, good, good. So that should do it. Now, you'll notice that the framing doesn't look very good here, okay? So all we gotta do is add some framing to this top piece, okay? All right, it's that one. So it's the second slot. So we're gonna add a little bit of framing on that second slot, okay? So let's just go to our brick wall and we're gonna add it to the top. So now we have framing at the top there, see? Same is true with this one and this one. I believe these are gonna be different, so let's, let's select this one here. So if you select the material, it'll flash red what slot it is, okay? So it looks like the second slot will have the top edge. There we go, what about this one here? Same thing top edge, boom, right there. So we're gonna select this, select this, select this. And we're gonna see which one it is, same thing. So the second slot is the top edge. All right, looks like it's not working. Hmm. Okay, it's the first slot. And same is true with up there, but let's go ahead and take a look and see how it looks <laughs> enter play mode here and take a look yeah it's coming to life very good what i will probably do after the stream is swap these so you have wood at the bottom and then stone at the top but overall looks pretty sweet lots of it visual fidelity here without doing much you know i love it very cool all right All right, one final thing is just go up here and find which slot is the bottom piece. Let's see here. Is it this one? I thought I knew what I was talking about with the red flash, but I don't think I do. Edge bottom, edge bottom, edge bottom. There we go. So it's the fourth one down, okay. So we're gonna select all these over here. <clears throat> and select these. Hopefully this will work. So it's like playing Sims, guys. Edge bottom all the way on the fourth slot. Looks like it works there, but it didn't work there. That's okay. Let's go ahead and just drag it into that. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Let's just go on all the way down the line. Awesome. Sweet. All right, let's hit play. Very pretty. I love it. It's looking good. It's a cool little hallway now. So there's our before or there's our after, right? So let's open up our screenshot and get an after photo. So with, I don't know how long this has been, what, 15 minutes? Um, we just get a lot more visual fidelity for the price of nothing, right? So that's before, after, before, after, right? 
And you know, that's without any props. I mean, we've got some benches and stuff, but we could, we could, we could go ahead and say, you know what, let's add a little crate here. Let's add a wooden crate to our scene. Um, I think we have a lot of wooden crates. I'm trying to figure out which one is which. I think that's the one. Yep. So we could put a wooden crate here, maybe one right here. Okay. You could add, we have some, uh, like barrels or what are they called? I can't remember what they're called. Let's select this and take a look here. We have wooden table. Okay, so these are old, right? Okay, so those are old. So let's see here. Hmm, I'm trying to find the new props. We need to get rid of that folder. There we go. Where are we? So let's see here, select this one here. Okay, there are our new props, okay. So, looking for our little box here. That's props. Interactive. I don't know where our props are. Still figuring out our new folder structure here. Can't remember. Hmm. But you guys get the idea, right? Okay, let's move on over here. So we can definitely add some framing to even elements like this right here. Okay. So right here, instead of just doing one uh, one trim piece along the top, right? You could add a trim piece along the bottom and the top, okay? So two edges here. It looks like we need to fix this material. I think something got lost in translation on GitHub, which is totally fine. So we'll just drag these all the way across. I believe maybe we can get away with putting it there. We'll see. So we have the two edges texture, so we're just going to drag that into the albedo here. And now you can see we've just added just a subtle detail that goes a long way, right? Go along here as well. And I want to show you what we can do to the hallways, okay? The hallways, we can do a very similar thing, and the, except we're going to use wallpaper. So the goal is to, ooh, it, look, it works. It's awesome. I mean, it'd be great if it was along the edge there, but <coughs> overall it looks fine. Let's go over to the other side here and do it. What we're trying to achieve in this game is a feeling of a castle, right? But it still feels lived in and it still feels like kind of like Victorian Gothic, right? Like Dracula's castle. So there's going to be hallways that don't look like dungeons, right? They're going to look like a mansion, right? Ooh, secret area. Way to go, Felipe. I like it. Awesome. Okay. Let's throw it over here too, just to make, make it match. Okay. Throw one here. What happened there? Ooh, we've got some Z fighting. It's okay. Looks like there was two on top of each other. That's okay. Another one there. And edge top or edge bottom. There we go. Got some more Z fighting. There we go. And now we match, right? So just that subtle change, just add some subtle detailing that makes the game look a lot more intentional. So you block out the level first and then you start dressing the scene, right? Love it. Very good. I'm thinking what I wanna do is really just break out into full on carpet here, okay? So we have this nice edge, and then we're going to just carpet all the way to the left and right past the stone pyres, OK? So let's do that. The first thing I'm going to do is let's frame it out, OK? So I'm going to do it sort of by hand right now. Actually, let's move. I want to show you guys. Let's move into the hallway and sort of show how to make things look intimate in this hallway, because right now it looks like a big old dungeon. And I would much rather it look like a cozy mansion. So the first thing I want to do is do hardwoods. Okay, so let's just go crazy here. Looks like we got some Z fighting here. 
Let's see. I'll, I'll talk to Felipe, figure out what's going on there. All right. And by the way, guys, those of you just joining us, just remember, if you want to support the development of the game, it's, like, it's kind of an expensive project. Um, if you're interested in supporting the game and seeing it, you know, come to completion, you can definitely um, support by joining full-time game dev. Now, obviously, guys, this is more supporting your future than mine, and I appreciate you listening to me read these ad reads, guys, these sponsored ad reads because they do support my channel, but they support you guys. They support you guys. Um, so if you're interested in joining the program, full-time game dev, I have over, over 3,000 students worldwide. Um, so check out using, I think there probably are three or two coupon codes left. They always sell out during these live streams. So be sure to check that out below. And we have maybe one more day of this, and then that's that. So take advantage of it if you're interested in joining the program. It's a massive program on how to make games and how to secure funding, how to hit six figures on Kickstarter, all of that. Okay, so let's do an, in actually, you know what? Let's do some carpet. This, this needs to be intimate. So let's create some carpet. So I'm just gonna drag in just some simple red cubes of the carpet, okay? And I think we're gonna need to do this manually. So this, <coughs> these here will not be the same because they are, they have a stone wall, right? There we go, awesome. Okay, this one here is not gonna work, so we're gonna do these by hand now. One of you were asking me, why are you dragging the material by hand? Well, well what else would you do? I, seriously, I don't know. Is there a tool that I should be using? Like a painting tool or something? Um, but this right here is gonna be stone. It's gonna be framed, so I'm gonna not worry about it right now. And I know for certain these are gonna be an edge, right? So carpet to edge, or one edge, one edge. Um, where is it? There it is. And there's, there's subtle details that really matter. So for example, let me show you. Let's rotate these really quick. There's an inside corner. Look at this. Just one little inside corner can add a little bit of an edge there, right? See that? Or, actually there's one, where's the one inside corner? There it is. And then you add the one edge here. See, so it's wrapping around the stone. So we're creating this very subtle but intentional look. Makes things just look beautiful. See that? You can use shift or control to select them all and then drag them all at once. That's, that's what I've been doing. Um, but not for these in particular because these are specific. But I appreciate I appreciate it. Sorry, I came across mean just now. Will you forgive me? I'm sorry. Um, there we go. And then we're gonna do actually you, let's let's do do two edge here. Look at that. Look how important this is. Just adding this detailing here is so important. We're gonna use three edge here. Look at this. It's so important, guys, to add edging. Look at this. It's already cozy. I want to I want to hear the clock ticking. I want to hear the thunder. I want to hear the rain against the window. I want to hear screams in the background. Shadows, moody lighting, carpet running along the floor, okay? So that's what we're trying to achieve here. We're going from cold to warm even though it's still creepy which is like classic Resident Evil, classic Castlevania feel, okay? All right, let's go to the two edge. There we go, actually this is gonna be one edge with an inside corner, which we don't have, which we don't have. So we gotta create it. So let's go carpet one, let's go to one, <coughs> let's go to the inside corner. Let's also go to the one edge. So we need one edge with an inside corner, okay? So we're gonna duplicate this to the one edge. There it is. That's gonna do it for us. Let's save it, and we're gonna call this one edge, one inside corner. The carpet is particularly modular. There's a lot of materials for the carpet. 
because and I that's because I know I'm going to use the carpet all the time, all the time. Um, so we got to create a new material now. So this is one edge, one uh, inside corner. All right, we'll drag that in, and now we can use it. See that? Now it's nice and clean. It's not perfect. I can definitely go in there and make it perfect. The way that we're going to do that is nudge it up by one or right by one and then up by one. Save that. Let's take a look. Almost. Down one. Ah. Left one. Left another. There it is. Okay, nice and clean, guys. Good job. Okay, now let's go to our outside corner. Look at that. So just playing Sims here. That's what we're doing. All right, we can use that same advice from one of you, which is select them all, Thomas. Just select them all. I agree. So we're going to do one edge here. Whoops. One edge here. Good. Rotate, but we're going to make sure it's sent to the pivot. Rotate and then just shift over and snap in place. See? All right, we need to do this one here. One edge. Drag it onto the spot here. We're almost there, guys, almost there. Set to center pivot. Good, good, almost there. This one needs to be a, a outside corner. Wait, whoops. I always drag the, the texture instead of the material. Let's do the outside corner here. And then we can rotate. No, we're good. So it looks like this, this wall is a little off. Hmm, that's not good. What do we do, Felipe? I don't think there's a solution, is there, bud? There is not. You could technically nudge this up by a little bit, just a tiny bit, and it solves the problem. But I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I need to talk to Felipe about how we're gonna solve that. Okay, this is gonna be an outside corner. And this is gonna look crazy good once we add the wallpapering. Suddenly it's gonna feel like a, a mansion instead of just a castle, which you're going from castle feeling to mansion feeling. You're sort of going in between. You enter a new area or a new room after you get a key, you reward the player with a visual change, all right? There's our carpet edge. There it is. Rotate it along its pivot and then just shift it back. Visually rewarding the player is a big deal. It's a big deal, guys. You want to do that. Okay, um, let's go ahead and add in some wallpaper. I think this should be uh, wood paneling here. So let's go to our wood paneling and then we'll do some wallpaper. So this can be a wood panel, wood panel, wood panel, wood panel. We can even make the stairs wood. I'll show you that really quick. Um, we have wooden stairs materials, so let's drag those in. So this feels a lot more intimate now. I'm kind of okay with that stone framing. It's not a huge deal. And by the way, guys, I'm super inspired by Castlevania 64. Um, that game is a terrible game, but it's also the greatest game ever made. They, they did so good with the mood and ambience and they just nailed it. Not wood there. What are you doing, Thomas? Wood paneling, bro. Jeez. Wood paneling here. You know, it probably needs a frame, sadly. If it needs a frame, then we need to use a frame. So let's actually use a stone for the framing, okay? So we're going to do a brick wall, but it's going to have top and bottom edge. So right here, we're creating some kind of cool framing device. That way we can put wood paneling on the second row. So it's just sort of guess and checking, especially starting out here, um, trying to figure out exactly what it should look like. But that looks cool. I, I think that's pretty sweet. Um, we can go to our wood paneling now and just put it right here. And we can continue that to the left here, but let's finish this little room here. All right, so see how it looks super blocky? It's like, ugh, it's so boring. Well, why don't we add some wood paneling in here. So all we gotta do is just select all of these 
and just go ahead and add some wood paneling. I'm not going to do these because I, I, I don't want to affect the other side of those just yet. And I don't want to affect the other side of these. So it, honestly, we should be doing it by hand for these. So let's just do it. I wish there was a painting tool, a material painting tool, which let's be honest, there probably is. Um, but I want at least two rows of wood paneling. See how it's becoming more intimate now, guys? Actually, no, 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 no. Wallpaper. That's what we wanted. We wanted wallpaper. No, we can do we can do one row of wood paneling and then one row of wallpaper. That's kind of the way it works, right? Especially like if you look at the background of my office, look, it's like this sort of wood paneling here, and then there's a wall that's painted above it, right? So we can use that sort of same mentality for this, right? So we're trying to use some general rules of interior design as we're creating this. So let's just do this corner here just so you guys can see what it's gonna look like. Now, just imagine, again, I, I send videos to Felipe all the time of like ambient, I could show it to you really quick actually. Ambient, an ambient feeling. So if I type in like, if I go to YouTube here and I type in ambient castle thunder or storm. There's so many things. This is the one I showed Felipe. We want this intimate feeling. So that's what we're trying to achieve right now. Okay. Okay. So that's the goal here. Alrighty. So we're creating an intimate feeling. Obviously we're going to do it with rain and thunder and music, but we're going to create that intimate feeling here as well. All right, we've got our wood paneling. Let's just drag it over here. I'm going to show you the wallpaper in just a second. It's going to really be a game changer. The wallpaper in particular changes everything. Um, let's go ahead and move our character controller to inside this room. I'm going to press control shift F, zero out his rotation. And now he's going to appear right where the uh, camera is. So, wow, look how intimate this feels now. Much cozier, much cozier. And when we have a couch in here, maybe a big table right here, it's gonna feel like a very intimate castle or a mansion room, okay? But we're not even close. Let's add in our wallpaper now, okay? So let's go to our wallpaper. Now the wallpaper is like the carpet. We have a lot of different options here. <clears throat> so I think we should do a edge bottom right there, right there, right there. It should be edge bottom. Why is it not working? There we go. There we go. There we go. And notice how our colors are very uh, specific. They're intentionally chosen. If we're using a green, it's a very subtle, light, desaturated green. Um, if we're using a red, it's a very vibrant red. So it pops and stands out. Okay. We may wallpaper this whole room from top to bottom, okay? except for the, the wood paneling. Edge bottom, edge bottom, edge bottom, good, 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 good. Awesome, guys, look at this, really coming together. And then I know for a fact, looks like that's kind of screwed up, need to have that rewrapped. Or that really <coughs> could just be wallpaper, you know? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, it looks a little weird there. What's going on? That's fine, I guess. I guess maybe we keep it. That's probably a better option. It's not my favorite, but for now, I'll talk to Felipe about unwrapping that. Okay, let's throw in some wallpaper at the, the top edge. So one edge top, right? There it is. Looks like we need to shift that ceiling up a little bit. This is going to change everything, guys. Just hold on. Wait for the final result. Be patient. We'll probably swap those out with wooden pillars. I'll show you how we're going to use Jason Wyman's tool for that. Who knows Jason Wyman? Jason Wyman is a good friend of mine and a YouTube game dev who's more code-focused. I'm very art-focused. Art direction, all that good stuff. 
Let's just keep on dragging them in. Now, is this process something you should do when you're done with the level or while you're making the level? Let's get a vote. Should you do set dressing when it's done, when the level's created and you like the platforming, or should you be doing it while you're making the level? Who knows? When it's done, when it's done, that's it. When gameplay is done first, that's the goal, right? Absolutely. Wallpaper, uh, just standard wallpaper. Almost done, guys. Almost done with this room here. And we could put shelving, we could, we could put portraits. We could really dress this room up as much as we wanted. Or I would say a nice medium balance. You don't wanna get it too complicated because at the end of the day, guys, this is a fast paced first person shooter. Um, boomer shooter so they're gonna be moving pretty fast so I don't see the value in putting a bunch of weird obstacles in their way right I wonder if we can make that trim more wood Let's see if we can yeah we can it looks good that way hopefully it doesn't screw up the outside no it's fine I would say we should probably just do wood planks no, that doesn't work. I think that's okay. Yeah. I'm not going to get fussy about that. Awesome. All right, let's hit play, and then we'll use Jason Wyman's tool to create. Look at this. Way more intimate now. Intimate room. Ceiling, normal maps are insane, so let's drop those down significantly. My goodness. That's my fault. Is it the height map, the occlusion map? What is it? Maybe it's the base map. That didn't work. Why is that? What's going on? I thought I fixed that. Oh, well, got to go fix that again. We'll fix the, the ceilings uh, when you're not watching me, basically, is what I'm saying. OK, so we have these pillars that are tall, but we want to do the wood variants. OK, so I'm going to select these, all of them. OK. And we're going to use the wooden ones. So we can actually just swap these out. So let's go to our tools, replace with prefab. This is what Jason Wyman made. Jason Wyman made this tool called replace with prefab. I think you can just Google it. Google replace with prefab and type in Jason Wyman. We should be good. So let's do our pillar tall. Where is it? Wood variant. Re click replace. There we go. And because they're all sized properly, it looks great. Okay. So let's just go ahead and hit play here. We can also add some more windows if we wanted. But overall, that's how quickly we can make this scene look more intimate, right? Beautifully done. We'll do the same going down this hallway here to make things look a lot more intimate, okay? And like I was saying, we can add in you know, maybe a few a few prefabs just to make things look a little bit more uh, intentional. Like, for example, I believe we have some bookshelves we could throw in here. I believe we can type in, let's see here, prefabs, modular. Hmm, I'm looking for them. Shelf, let's see if we can find the right one. Yeah, there we go. There it is. So we can just <coughs> snap this into the scene here and try and be a little bit more intentional about its location. I would say I want it to be nice and flush against this wall to create some variation. So let's go up to the edge here, make sure we're getting it right on the spot. Snapping right in place. Good. So we do one there, nice and centered, and one here. Nice and centered. Very good. So let's hit play and just see how this looks. So we're just playing Sims here, guys. Just playing Sims. That's all this is. Now, obviously, we got to optimize um, significantly. But overall, this is absolutely what we're going for. 
I would say the top needs a trim piece right up here. Actually, it does. I think it's just the ceiling here is a little too low. Yeah, so that we have a problem with the ceiling, I see. But that overall, guys, is what we're going for. All right, believe it or not, it has been, it has been an hour, guys. If you enjoyed this live stream and you wanna see this game uh, come to completion, your support means everything. But if you also wanna learn what I do and make indie games from your bedroom, and believe it or not, you can secure six figures with just a demo. It would be great if you could support our sponsor, which is Full Time Game Dev, which is my other company that is my online school. Okay, I have 3,000 students worldwide, and if you're a student, feel free to say hello in the chat. I like to see you guys in the chat. Um, great reviews. There's maybe two coupon codes left below, maybe. Um, they may be sold out. They're usually sold out by the end of the stream, so check it out below um, to see if you're interested in using up those 50% those off coupon codes to join this program. 30 plus hours of content, 2D and 3D art tutorials, Get how I get funding, six figures in funding from publishers, from investors with just a demo, and I, that's what I do. I've done it twice. I'm doing it. I'm currently doing it um, for for father as well. Um, how to hit the Steam front page? How to code? How to use Unity? How to make 2D and 3D games? 2D and 3D art? Um, tons of workbooks. How to do Kickstarter? I've done it all, and I teach you guys how to do it as well. Be sure to check it out. Thanks for hanging out. This was really really fun, guys. I love hanging out with you, and I will talk to you later. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. Hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free, it's my treat to you, and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit, I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me, hit subscribe, and also, this is important, hit that notification bell, here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have, and you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye.